You see the letters? Because I see the letters, and now I can't unsee them. Hi there, Michelle here, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching myself how to use a knitting machine. Right before Christmas, me and my sister went in halves, and we ended up purchasing a knitting machine from Facebook Marketplace. I never really buy anything from Facebook Marketplace just because I don't trust people. I thrift a lot of my stuff from like a thrift store so I can see it in person. Getting your hands on one of these is uh, a little challenging. Had to go to the Marketplace to find it. Pick this up for $60. Since me and my sister went halves, technically I really only had to pay $30 for this machine. I've wanted this machine for probably, probably a year now. Once I heard that it's something that exists. I knew that I needed it and I want to blame TikTok for that. Yeah, that's where I first saw it. I also got this shoe box full of things. So let's kind of go through this and see what we have in here. And then I'm going to watch some YouTube videos on how to actually use this machine. And then we're going to try it out. My goal is to make a sweater with this machine. Don't know if that's going to happen or not. Now here's the thing. I have not done extensive research only because I'm one of those people who is a practical learner. I can't watch a video or read something and retain its knowledge without actually doing it. I want to set this machine up and then watch everything so I can like go through the steps physically while I'm watching it. From the little knowledge I know of a knitting machine, these here are weights. They'll weigh down your project because when you go back and forth with the yarn, it will start to curl. So these will help it keep it straight. Spare needles. So that's, that's great. It's a little counter. So like I know, I guess where I am with how many rows. Not too sure what this is. Again, I have to look up what these things are. But I have two of these ones and two of these ones, so I gotta figure out what those do. These, these I know, these are to clamp it to the desk. Now here's the other problem that I have. I don't have a very long desk. The only desk I have is my computer desk, or my computer sits on when I do my editing. So I can't set up shop there because I gotta do some editing. I think I might clamp it to here, and then I have one, one of these weights. I think I need like more of them. I did look on Amazon, and they do sell the weights don't have to be the same weights that come with the machine or the same brand they're just heavy weights to keep your yarn down this doodad which i think the yarn goes through but also looks like a uh, something that would go on a teletubby's head this thing which i feel clips onto the machine and there's supposed to be a pole that goes up and then your yarn attaches to it's not it's not in here and a 2.5 crochet hook i'll just uh add that to my collection of crochet hooks. That's that's all that this thing came with. My plan is to set it up and figure it out and maybe make something with it. What I'm gonna actually use is this baby yarn. It is a light three, very, very fine weight yarn. And I think that this is going to be perfect for this machine because it takes a very, very thin yarn. And I typically don't buy thin yarn because I don't like crocheting with it because it takes way too long. Four skeins of like various colors of this at a yard sale for $5. So I'm gonna experiment with it and we'll see where it goes. It's gonna be very interesting. Now here's the thing. I actually have acquired a second knitting machine. I went from owning no knitting machines to owning two knitting machines less than a month. And it's all because I work with this lovely woman and I was telling her how I had bought this machine. I wasn't too sure if everything was in there. And she's like, I have one sitting in my basement that I've never used. You may have it. And I'm like, yes, please. Because I bet it comes with more parts and it does. Don't even know what brand it is. So I have to do some research on it. She said that it belonged to her friend's mother and her mother had owned it for 30, 40 years. But it is in way better condition than this one. What I think I want to do is learn on the Singer. It's the Singer Mod LK150 because there's a lot of tutorials for it and stuff like that on the internet. So I feel more comfortable if I learned on this one first because I can find more information about it. Although the other one did come with a really handy manual. This one does not. I want to see how I can do with this one and then from there I can start using the other one. And here's the thing, me and my sister went on halves because we both want to use this machine and clearly both of us can't use it at the same time. So it kind of works out for both of us. Without further ado, I'm going to set this up and I'm going to start 
see and how this baby works. Right, so I set this up, but unfortunately it's missing the pole that goes up and connects onto the like the yarn and then comes back down. So it's kind of creating a mess because I thought maybe I, I didn't need it. I need it. Really just want to start this. So I think I might go get the other knitting machine because that one's different. That one doesn't have like a pole that goes up and down. The yarn just goes straight through. So I'm going to set that up. I switched to this one and it actually there's a really good tutorial from like the 70s or the 80s for this machine so i'm following instructions That it's it's actually working it's working this is what it's looking like so far i've dropped a few little stitches down here and i think my main problem was is that i need to want a better table than this obviously but my yarn is getting like caught and when it's getting caught it's snagging and then it's like ah no no what did you do oh no you started the process so it would stop but yeah i think this is actually turning out pretty cute cute so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna finish watching the tutorial i didn't do that yet i'm gonna finish watching this tutorial on how to cast off and then i'll show you what this looks like and then i i might just start trying to make a sweater we'll see we'll see how that goes That's ah how how did you get caught onto that? Back it up, back it, back it, back it, back it. That's what it's looking like. Like it's gonna fall apart. It's fine. I'm just you know practicing here. But the top I did a little stitch and that stayed. But the the bottom here I'm gonna have to like sew that up. Overall, it's not bad. So I needed more light. I forgot I own this lamp. I want to do a DIY with it. Like I want to make it orange, I think. And so I was just kind of like leaving it aside with all my other projects I want to do. And I'm like, wait a minute, it works. Use it for the light. Yesterday I was pretty much working in the dark because it gets dark at like what, four o'clock? I got pretty far. And then um, I got like four drop stitches in a row and they're, they're, they're easy to fix. You just use like the little doodad and you just, you know, loop it over. I think I might stop right now. I'm kind of hungry, so I think I'm going to go eat dinner, and then I'm going to come back to this, because if I keep doing this, I'm just going to get a migraine or something. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop for right now, and then I will come back. This is like, I don't know, day four or five of me trying to figure out this machine. I did figure it out. There's a little bit of finessing that has to go into it. It's quite easy once you get the hang of it, but I will say that a lot of times the stitches will drop from either end of it, so I just have to keep an eye out for that every time I do a pass. Now, I did get the sleeves done, and yes... It does look like a baby blanket because it's from baby blanket yarn. It's literally a photo of a baby. Bernat baby sport. Also, it's from Zellers and it was originally uh, $10. It is for a baby blanket. I did not want to go buy yarn for this project. From the last like sit down update I did with y'all, I did switch over to this machine because the other machine, it was the yarn tension rod, which is like literally a plastic pole was not included when I purchased this off of Facebook. I decided to go with this one because this one is literally just this. The yarn goes through here and then the yarn goes and sits on the floor. Like a lot of other things like this, it has to go up on the tension rod, around, come down. It, it, there's a whole thing to it. Whereas this, three parts to this, you have this, you have that, and then you have the counter, which is over there, which um, I forgot existed when I made the first arm. So I had to count how many rows I did and then I put the counter on and honestly, it makes things so much easier. So that's why I went with this one and it it's just called the Bond Classic. I am so happy my one friend at work gave it to me. Thank goodness. Otherwise, I would not be able to do this video right now because I'd have to order that gosh darn part. I'm trying to find the part. Like, I'm trying to find it. But a lot of times, you have to buy the whole thing. And I'm like, I'm not buying a, a new knitting machine for one part. Either I'm going to find 
like a part store online and buy it from there or I'm just gonna make one out of wood or my dad's gonna make one for me so anywho I digress sleeves I should have made them a little bit longer because when they're on here they like stretch and you think it's long enough and you're like this will work and then you go like this and you're like it might not work the sleeve looks a little small you see a lot of the sweaters that I have like this sweater here the arm doesn't start to all the way down here and then it still rolls so there's still this much like this sweater, I am gonna be putting cuffs on them. Will I get the cuffs done before the end of this video? I don't think so, cause it's Wednesday and I have to have this video done by Saturday so it can go on Sunday. I know for a fact I will have all four parts together and I can sew them together. So I will have a sweater. It just won't be a finished sweater. But again, this project is me just figuring out this machine. Today I'm gonna be working on the front and the back and I have to figure out the math for that. So this here was 60 chains across. So I might have to do the entire higher thing for like a front and a back panel. Again, I want this to be oversized. I don't want it to be fitted. So like as wide as I can get it is how it's going to happen. So that's what's going on today. At least making a front or a back piece. It's just two of the same square. And then when I'm all done it, I will be sewing it together. And then I would like to put like a neck, the bottom ribbing and cuffs. So I don't know if I'm going to get that far for this video, but I hopefully will get at least the shell of the sweater done for this week. So let's, let's mosey back on over there and uh, you know, start working on that today. Oh, I forgot to mention, I still have all this yarn left. I think I'm gonna play yarn chicken and see if I can actually make the whole thing the same. If not, I'm gonna switch over to another baby yarn for the front and the back. So that way like the arms will match and the front and back will match. I might have enough, like there's still a lot of yarn in here. So hopefully I can, if not, you know, sure I'll waste time, but I wanna give this a go. We'll see, we'll see how this goes. So I had to set it up and take it apart like three times to get it working. But for some reason, when I added the, cause there's two of these, there's this one. And then there's this little one. When I added this one, so that way it was like the full length, it kept dropping stitches and I tried it three times and it wasn't working. So I gave up. I feel like this should be long enough. It's basically as long as whatever this is. It's finally taking shape. I'm six rows in. The arms were 89. So I think that this is gonna have to be like twice as much. We will see. So I'll catch back up with you either one, I've made a horrible mistake and have to restart, or two, I got the back piece done. Hopefully it's the second option. Well, I'm not done it. I had to take a really long break because it kept dropping stitches and it, it's still it's still doing it. It keeps dropping stitches at the end. Quite annoying. It kind of gives me a headache every time I have to like fix it. It's fine. I'm going to continue doing it. I was kind of hoping to get two of these done today, but uh, I might just get one now because it's, it's not getting late, but it's like almost six o'clock and I'm tired. You know, today went a lot smoother. I didn't have any problems and that's because I learned to use the weights. The weights they are your friend and you want to use as many as you can and you want to make sure they're really close to the little hooks so that way it weighs it down evenly all my pieces are done all of them are done now i'm going to take it off of here this is it this is all the yarn that i have left from doing this project so i think that's pretty good i now just have to take this off of here and then i can actually start connecting all the pieces together and make a sweater. Okay, so I have front, back, or back, front, not sure. And then I have the two sleeves and then uh, the remaining yarn. I feel like I should have made these sleeves a lot longer, but if I had made them a lot longer, I would not have enough to have finished the back and front piece. Cause look, this is it, this, this is it. Now what I'm gonna do is I am just going to uh, attach them all together, see how it fits. I'm betting it's gonna be way too small and not gonna fit me, but I am definitely gonna connect all the pieces tonight. And I'm actually just gonna use a yarn needle and sew it together with the remaining of this. And then I also have some white yarn that is the exact same as this, like the exact same brand. So when I run out of this, I'll switch it up for that. Yeah, wish me luck. I don't know why I'm like this. 
I sewed a sleeve on inside out. I don't know. It's like in my head, everything's working right. And then it's not. Oh, I was so close. Only had this sleeve left. I just had to sew this sleeve and I would have been like done the shell of the, the sweater. I have to take the sleeve apart now because this is the inside, that's the outside. The amount of times that this has happened to me, you think I would know to double check by now? And I'm pretty sure I did double check, but I guess I have to check three times because apparently I cannot be trusted to myself. All right, I'm taking apart this sleeve and then reattaching it. This is the finished product. Technically it's not finished, but it's as good as it's gonna get. Originally, what I wanted to do is I wanted to crochet some cuffs, like some long cuffs on here. I wanted to crochet a neckline and I wanted to crochet a hem on the bottom, but I'm done. This is, this is it. This is as far as it's gonna go because I don't really care for the fit of it, but that's fine. This project was more of me figuring out how to use the knitting machine. Your first project isn't gonna always be a success. When it is, it's amazing, but when it's not, you just learn from it and you move on. The front and the back, I think that was the perfect measurements, but where I went wrong was the sleeves. Now, one, yes, you might be like, oh, it's because you made it too small. Well, technically the sleeve goes down to here and then I was gonna make a cuff about that big and I've made bigger cuffs on other projects. It's just a little too snug. It's basically just right here, just feel like it fits, but it just feels a little uncomfortable. You've seen it on and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna sit down and we're just gonna kind of go over how the project looks more up close. Okay, so let's talk about this. Using the knitting machine, it was really, really fun. You know, after my many breakdowns with, with that thing, here we are. I didn't hide any of the tail ends of this project because I know I'm not gonna wear it. And that's okay because again, this project was not a, I'm dying to wear it. It's more of a, can I make it? How can I make it? And figure out where I can improve on my next project. How do I even want to start talking about this? We have the sleeves, we have the front, we have the back. Like I've never knitted. I would like to learn how to knit eventually. I feel like a lot of people who knit, knit super, super fast. It can make like all these great things. So I would like to learn how to knit eventually. The only thing I can compare this to is like a crochet work. So when I'm crocheting, the way it is, the way I'm crocheting it is how it looks like in the end. Whereas with this machine, because of all the weights, it pulled it down. So it was very hard for me to determine how long it should be because it would pull down. But then when I took it off, obviously it would, you know, spring back up. I didn't write down any of the, uh, any of the measurements or anything like that, which I probably should do. But I kind of remember a little bit in my head. What I ended up doing was I did hand stitch them all together. I know that I can connect them together on the machine and then like, you know, just do one pass and they're connected, but I'm not that advanced that I wanted to figure that out for this project. So I did hand stitch everything and it was kind of difficult in a sense because the way the knit is, it's very stretchy. Whereas when you're crocheting, it has a little bit of give to it, but you can like pretty much line things up where when I was connecting this, it was kind of hard for me to line them up. It was very stretchy. I did do my best, but I think that the, the issue that I mentioned earlier is that the arm width was just a little too small. Because here's the thing, I love oversized garments. You know that you know when I make crochet things, I always make things oversized, whether it's by design or mistake. Yeah, usually it's by design, but sometimes it's by mistake. This here for the arm was actually 60 chains across. And when I mean 60, I, I think chains, I don't know, I'm doing crochet terms. I think it's chains for knitting too. I might be mistaken. I probably should have done 80 or 90. This length was perfect because I was planning on doing a ribbed edge. Just because when you see the knitting, it does like to roll down more crochet. Crocheting, crocheting doesn't do that. Crocheting stays nice and flat where you want it to be. But knitting likes to roll a little bit. So there's that. Again, this was just a learning experience. And one of the things that I learned or learned is you need weights, multiple weights. Now with this machine, it came with this little contraption, which you saw me use. And in here, they're actually metal rods that are weighted. There's four of these long ones. So you can put two in each side and weigh them down. And when I was working on the sleeves, that worked for me. That was enough weight to pull it down 
that I didn't have to add any more weights. Should I have added weights? Absolutely, because there was a few times where they came off and I got real frustrated. I wanted to check it out the window. When I was working on the bigger pieces, so like the front and the back, the weights in this was not enough to drag it down. And that's when I had to add the more weights onto the sides. And I can show you, I can show you where I messed up on both sides. I got about this far down when it started giving me trouble. So you know that you have to add those weights on early on. Again, I'm learning things while doing this project. As as you can see right here, I messed up and when I was trying to re-latch on the loops that were skipped, I was doing it wrong. I was doing it from the front, but you have to do it from behind. So that's another thing I had to learn to do. And then that's when I learned use weights and then I did and then I was not having that trouble anymore. It would like, you know, latch off here and there. It's fine. I, I learned how to use the tools. So that's great. If you don't make mistakes, you're not going to learn how to fix them. And then when you need to learn how to fix them, you're just going to get really frustrated down the line. Whereas if you make the mistakes early on, you'll know from then not to do it again or the simple solutions on how to do it. I learned from my mistakes, if anything. And then the other problem with, this is more aesthetic problems, not the knitting machine problems. There's these big blotches. Do you see these blotches? It looks like it's saying the word B, like, or B R. Like that looks like a B, that looks like a B. Okay, that looks like an R, that looks like a B again. That one looks like an R, and then another B. I know it's supposed to be a baby blanket, but is, the word baby supposed to, to be on here or something? Cause I don't understand why there's a bunch of bees. Like, do you see this? Am I crazy to think that these look like letters? Cause they look like letters. It kind of looks like it happened there, but it's not as prominent. Like I'm not crazy, right? Like you see the letters, right? You see the letters? Cause I see the letters and now I can't unsee them. Maybe that's why I, I shouldn't have used baby blanket. Also, I realized this, I was actually starting to use this one as you saw in the video to test out how to use the knitting machine. And then I kind of forgot that I wanted to switch yarns. I wanted to switch to this baby yarn, which is more like a pastel-y Easter kind of color. And that's what I wanted to make this project out of. And I, I remembered it too late in the project for me to want to start over. If I want to make another one, I have uh, more yarn for that. That's pretty much all I can talk about for this. I did my best. I made a top with a knitting machine. That was my goal. But I think for when I do want to do my next project, because right, well, currently right now I have three crochet projects on the go right now that I need to get done by the 1st of March. It is almost the middle of January right now. So I have about a month and a half to finish three projects. Two are cardigans and one's a vest. Heads up on my future videos in the next month and a half. I think when all those videos are done and then, oh gosh. That's right, there's another sweater that I want to make after all of that, which I thought of today. Anywho, for the next project that I want to do, I think I want to do more my colors. I want to test out maybe a thicker yarn, see where that goes. I want to play around with it a little bit more, maybe learn how to do ribbing on the ends because there's a way to do that. You know what? Out of the first project, I give this, I give this an eight. It's not perfect. I'm probably not going to wear it. Maybe I'll take it apart for scrap yarn eventually in the future, but for making my first sweater on a knitting machine that I technically wasn't even sure I was going to get done because I was getting frustrated. I think I did a pretty good job. If you are new to my channel and you like sewing, crafting, and thrifting, and crocheting, and anything with yarn, why not hit the subscribe button? You can also follow me on my Instagram and my TikTok, which is Grancy Dinosaur Tea Party. I think that is it, so y'all have a good day now.